This is Gordon Pepper, and I haven't done a Southeast match in a while. But here I am, and here this is. This is a World Championship Series Southeast match. This is a heavyweight match it's for the heavyweight title. There's a number of ramifications on this one, but let's first talk about what we currently have. What we currently have is your current champion, Nick Christie. Uh, AKA, you can tell on the back of his jersey, Degenerate. He'll be going up against somebody that's been to the top of the mountain before. That is Lee Robeson. So Lee, definitely no slouch. And this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be a really good match. Nick Christie, of course, a former world champion, as well as obviously the current Southeast heavyweight champion. This will be fun. Here's the first shot over from Christie. That ball looks good, it is. And if we get that a lot, which won't surprise me if we do, we're going to be in for a heck of a treat today. Christy from Minnesota Society, which has, I believe, right now, the best record in the Southeast, in the UBA. So, Minnesota Society is definitely going to be heard from in July for the postseason. Now, obviously, Robeson would love to be heard from as well. We'll get to that momentarily. Let's see his first shot. Robeson, right out of the gate, a little bit late. Aye, that's not how you want to start. 2 4 8 10. And that's not how you want to start against Nick Christie. Again, Nick Christie, tons of experience in the world. He's held the world title before. He's your current Southeast champion. He wants the world title again, and that's being currently held by Charles Withers. And here is one of the ramifications whoever wins this match will be able to go after Charles Withers' world title. So, a lot at stake here. Robeson has picked the right time to come in and be the number one challenger for Christie. Of course, for him to do that, he's got to do better than what he's currently doing. The first frame almost made that, did not. So, Christie with a very quick lead over Robeson as we go into the second. As you see over here again, uh, thanks. A special shout out to Anthony Nieves, camera guy, and. As you can see in the lower right-hand column, usually we have names in this case, lower right-hand column, lower right-hand corner. Usually we have names, in this case we have the UBA team names. So, Menace is Nick Christie. And Dillagaff, which I will say, well, hold on a second, let's see what Robeson does here frame two. You can see again, that ball looks a lot better. Oh, well, maybe not. Aye. This is what I get for getting a bad angle. Three, four, six. So, anyways, uh, Robeson being represented by Dillagaff. Do I look like I give a fig? I will say it's not really fig. We all know what Dillagaff stands for. It ain't fig. It is an F word. It's got one more letter than fig. And Robeson right now, based on the first couple of frames, doesn't look like he gives a fig either. In this case, he gives a spare. Pair of opens by Lee on the board. That's too many opens to be giving Nick Christie for starters. And you really don't want to be giving Nick Christie any opens to start the game. Because now he's going to put a lot of pressure. I almost guarantee you that this ball, if it's not going to be a strike, at least it's going to be buried. Christie right now knows how to take care of business. Let's see if he knows how to take business on, take care of business on this lane. He does. Strike on lane six. Very nonchalant, very looking down, internally he's going, hee <laughs> I got you now, <laughs> So Christy right now, it says on the board, up by 17, he's up a lot more than, a lot more than that. This could be 43 here with a strike in the third frame. And more importantly, gives Lee no wiggle room. Now, now Lee has to hope that Nick makes at least one, if not a series of mistakes here. We're talking third frame, there we go, three in a row. Christy may not have looked too thrilled about that shot. It looks pretty good to me. In the end, I'm only commentator. Robeson right now, he's... Robeson's got a whole lot of blue and white numbers up there, which is not good because Christy, as we all see, has got three letters and they're all X's. In the third frame, and again, right now, Robeson, what he really needs to do, obviously, A, stop throwing splits, but B... Try to string some strikes together, get a little bit of pressure here on Chrissy, because if not, Chrissy's gonna run away with game one. Ooh, almost left another one. Oh, three pin almost goes down, does not. Almost leaves another split with the three four. At least now he's got something makeable. So for all of us that are joining me, I am Gordon Pepper. This is game one of our best of seven.
for the Southeast Heavyweight title. And any best of seven, I'm sure most of you know this, but just in case you don't, in any best of seven, whoever gets the four games first wins. So if Nick Christie does this for four games, we're, for four games, we're not going to see games five, six, and seven. We're just going to see games one through four and a very lengthy interview. So we're welcoming here for the season brawl for all. Right now, not much of a brawl. We do have a spare. So Robeson finally with a mark. Of course, he's down by a whole lot of pins at this point as we go into the fourth frame. It, it says he's down by 13. No, he's not. He could be down again by as much as 43. So, and then a couple more strikes from uh, Mr. Menace, a.k.a. Nick Christie, and this game will be over at the halfway point. Because you're looking at it right now, Robeson does not have a good look at this moment. He's thrown two splits, the third one could have been a split. Here we are in game four. I'm in game four, in frame four. Nick Christie's wishing it's game four at this point. Here's a shot from Mobis in that ball. Looks at he make the adjustment. He sure did. Hey, first strike on the board for Lee. He's sort of shaking his head. Yeah, that's all I had to do. Just a little bit of an adjustment, which is great, except he's given Nick Christie a three frame advantage. And usually at that point, if you're going to give anybody a three frame advantage, especially on the heavyweight side, aye. So, Robeson needs some mistakes here from Nick Christie. That, that's all it comes down to at this point. Now, as we talk, here's Nick Christie. Fourth frame, that ball's wiggling in a little bit. Doesn't matter. All the pins go down. 4-0 for Christie, going into frame 5. Christie right now, again, it says 23. That's 43. Going into the fifth frame here. The Degenerate, as he called himself in the back of the UBA jersey, he's thrown nothing but strikes. Robeson, on the other hand, has thrown one strike, and one spare, and two opens. Again, that will not get it done against Nick Christie. Even though it does look like he figured out something. However, that I was about to say Nick Christie's figured out lane 5. Did until that point, 2-8. That ends the string, however, again, he's got a fairly substantial lead at this moment. If he makes a spare, he'll have a 108 in the fourth, potential 128 in the fifth frame. Bets that Robeson can even do at this point is 97, so already Robeson down by 31 pence. That's assuming, of course, he gets a strike in the fifth frame. And that's also assuming that Nick Christie gets a spare anyway. Christie right now, very solid start to this game. Christie, a former world champion. Roba said, not a former world champion, but I'm sure he'd like to be. Because if he's a former world champion, that means he would have held on to the world title. World title right now is currently being held by Charles Withers, and he has been nothing short of dominating in his performances so far in both winning and defending the South World of the South, not just the South, the World Heavyweight Championship that that contain that includes both the Northeast and the Southeast. Robeson right now looking to double, maybe chip away some of the lead. He does with a big mixer, but that works. That's the first ball from either person that's been light in the pocket. Robeson right now, a little bit, bit of grit and a little bit of smack talking over to Christie. Both of them know each other very well. Yeah, that now a little bit of smack, smack talking to Anthony in the camera guy. You can tell by my voice, allergies have hit me fairly hard, so I apologize for the coughing and the deep voice, which makes it sound like I've swallowed a bullfrog. Robeson right now looking to swallow more of Nick Christie's lead. That looks good, it is. All of a sudden, we went from three non-strikes to three strikes. Robeson at least is trying to make a game out of this one. Nick Christie knows that he's shaking his head up and down. Now, just from a numerical standpoint, and I know it's very early to talk about this, but should Robeson go out the door, that's a 247. If, uh, and this is again how important that early lead was, if Chris B goes Dutch or strike, spare, strike, spare, which he won't do, but if he did, that would have been a 248, and then he wouldn't have to double. Now, all of a sudden, he does. Assuming that Robeson goes out the door, Christie's got to find a double somewhere along the lane. Right now, he's got a two-pin. 
two winners for a pin. He's got to pick that up. We've got his account. That was for a pin. I take that back. But he's going to get the shot he will. Christy right now still with a very decent lead as we go into the seventh frame. Christy is working on a spare. Robeson on a three-bagger. And yes, it is Robeson, not Robinson. I actually did that the first time around, and I got message said, you idiot, it's Robeson, R-O-B-I-S-O-N. So that is Lee Robeson. Looking again, he's, he's been in this position before. And when you have veterans like this going for the title, this is, this is, I have a feeling this is gonna be a good match. I think this will be. I mean, Robeson's not gonna scare easy here. Christy right now, looking to get back on the strike wagon, he does. Big strike, that stops the sparing right there. Now, if Christy goes out the door, that's a 267, and as I said before, the best that Robeson can do is a 247. However, Lee's gotta keep putting that pressure on. He's running out of frames here, at least he knows that if he can put pressure on Nick. Nick's got to find a double, and he's got two spares. Maybe he's look, losing his look a little bit. Robeson right now, seventh frame, looking to continue striking, and he does not ten pin. Well, so much for that pressure that I was talking about. That puts him back into a 51, 51 pin deficit. And that is assuming he makes a spare, and of course, more importantly, because he's only on a spare, and Christie's on a strike, that gives Nick Christie basically is not as long as Christie fill frames and doesn't leave any opens, he's going to take this game. And he'll do it convincingly. Because if I said if he went Dutch, he goes 247, and Robeson right now can no longer catch him. The best that Lee can do is a 226. So Lee is going to not only have to go out the door, he's going to need a lot of help from Nick. And a lot of help meaning more than one open. So therefore, I would think that this one is pretty close to being Dunsky. Robeson up again right now. It's, it's, it's striker game over at this point in the 8th frame. There's the ball. Oh, he's throwing that ball out there. Hey, there's the strike. If you notice, and I do, Robeson started out in the middle at the beginning, got nothing, got nothing, got nothing, then moved over to the left, threw the ball out, swung it out a little bit. Now that ball's hooking in nice. Probably will not help in this game, but it could help him later on. So he can do one of two things here. Number one, obviously, he can improve his own line. Number two, he can sort of try to scuff up the Christie. Maybe he's already done that. A little bit. Christy right now is keeping the ball down and in. A frame. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Yeah, this one's going to be over. Christy no longer needs to throw a mark. I don't think. Obviously, he still needs to get good count. Another strike here. It's definitely over. Even though it says 11, his double's not counted in there. So it's actually 41 with two frames to go. He's on a double. Lee is on a one strike. So the 41 is actually going to be even more than that. But one more strike here, we don't have to worry about it. Here's a shot here in ninth frame. That ball's still down and in and still buried. So strike, 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 spare, spare, strike, strike, strike for Nick Christie. Christie throwing a beautiful game. Uh, Robeson, I think he's finally found something at the end of that first game, but that's not going to help him now. Could help him later. As we go into games two and three. Right now, we still have to finish out game one. Let's see what Wilson does here. The last time he was on this lane, he had a smart. But it wasn't a strike, and he's not going to get a strike. Eey, that was sort of like what he did at the beginning of the game. So now he's sort of puts it around the line. You can tell that he's puts it around the line. He knows this game's over. And if he didn't know it before, that 2-4-8-10 staring at him tells him now, uh, buddy, you're done. You're done this game. So even assuming that he makes a spare, the best that Robeson can do at this point is a 206. Christie already has that. He's got a 207. So this game, very done. Match, not done by a long shot, I don't think. Well, he gets a different two pins this time. He left that, I believe, in the first frame. He did. On that same lane. 
got two different pins. Going into 10th frame, uh, we will just say that Nick Christie will win the first game. So, Robeson, right now, the jersey in the back says, what time? You did not write your name on the sheet. You have about 12 Oops. seconds to get with Tracy to figure this out. <laughs> We're talking about not getting your name on the sheet. Ken Robinson right now does not have his name in this game, at least not yet. So Lee Robinson right now, oh, he gets a strike, albeit probably not the way that he wants. Set now, obviously, in the cross between the Northeast, we call that a Brooklyn. Southeast, I think we also call it a Brooklyn. Typing some notes in right now. Now the question becomes: Do I want to do some trivia? Now we'll do trivia for another time. Okay, I'm going to save some of my trivia. Got some good trivia though coming up. Definitely, if I am fortunate enough to cover that Nick Christie, Charles Withers match, or the Lee Robeson Charles Withers match, depending on who wins. Ooh, ten pin. Now, as you can tell here, Robeson is is shooting on the other side. That's certainly, at least in the southeast, definitely, that's a show that the game is over from a mathematical standpoint, and they're just they're just finishing out and then just getting ready for the next game. Northeast, depending on who it is, they'll do that too. Because he right now is taking game one. He is one step closer. That aforementioned Mega Bowl match with Charles. I'm Mega Bowl. That aforementioned Heavyweight match with Charles Withers. Mega Bowl actually happened with Charles Withers successfully defending. Charles Withers has beaten, not defended, uh, a number of people. He has beaten Kyle Troop. He hasn't defended against him, but that was in our number one contender match. That was years ago. Since, since then, Troop has gotten, shall we say, into big time. He's gotten to be a much better bowler. And to be quite honest, clearly so is Charles Withers. So, Robinson's going to finish with 192. Christie's going to leave a sloppy mess up there. He's going to finish with a 245. At the end of game one, Nick Christie, 245. Lee Robinson, 192. Christie leads one game to nil. Everybody's taking a break. I gotta do some notes. All right. Now, if I remember correctly, Nick Christie started game one, so therefore Lee Robeson will start game two. This is a best of seven. Whoever gets the four games first wins. Robeson right now. He's got a goose egg. Which isn't too bad. We've only played one game. Robeson right now. His ball's looking to be good. It is. Ball did not score it out on the right-hand side as some of the problematic frames that he's had. That ball did. It, it, it's, it's almost sort of like Lee needs to follow Paige from Nick Christie's book right now, at least. Down and in seems to be the correct angle to put the ball on the floor. And that's what Nick Christie's pretty much been doing. Power shot, second hour, down and in. Looking good. Stone some speed on the ball. Also looks good. There's that second arrow, and does he get the roll? No! Nick, Nick is looking for it to go. Uh, D Dilligaf, the team of Dilligaf, I should say, all the fan base behind uh, Robeson says, No, stand up, stand up! And uh, the Tempens is listening to Robeson's group and standing up. Christy right now, looking to make a simple corner pit. Someone like Christy, that should not be a problem. And it will be. So we have a quick strike nine spare on the board. A little bit of an edge for Robinson going into the second frame. I say little because if Christy strikes and Robinson doesn't, then there's no lead. There's no edge. We're still tied. 
assuming, of course, that Nick Christie gets a strike here. Let's see what he does. Let's find out. Frame two coming up, still down and in. Ooh, that ball jumped up a little bit. All of a sudden, Robeson, that, that work that he was doing, swinging the ball out there, may have caused that. Looked good to me, except the ball jumped in a little bit. So that went from look good to me to, oh, glad you didn't leave a 7 pin up there to go along with the 6 10. Quick 6 10 again. Another, er, another very makeable spare. And for someone like Christy, this should not be an issue. Christy's on the ball down. That looks all right. Throws it right at it. That's how you make the spare, and he does. So right now, two marks for Christy. However, they are both spares. Lee Robeson right now has a chance to take a lead. He did not have a he did not have a lead at all in game number one. If you remember, uh, Robeson started with two opens, and then Nick Christy threw the first three at him, and that was basically all all she wrote game one. The audio go out a little bit here. I don't want to talk in front of the announcer. Robeson may not mind here. There's two in a row. Two in a row for Robeson. Now he got the lead in this game. Game two coming along. Now obviously he can't completely do to Christy what Christy did to him game one because Robeson's first two frames were opens and not spares. However, three in a row here won't give Robeson at least a 20-plus pin lead at this moment. Boss coming out. That looks good. It, it, ooh, no, it is not. Nine pin. I was like, get it. Oh, wait, hold it. Wait a minute. Stop that. Oh, I, that looked good to me, and Robeson's clearly looking like he thought that it looked good to him. So what time? Nine pin time. Again, pin right in the middle of the lane should not be an issue. And we'll wait to see if he makes this. And it looks like he will. He does. Even though we're a, we're a couple of opens, they were of the split variety from Lee. No bowler has missed a makeable spare. No unforced errors, shall we say. Actually, I just said it. So Nick Christie going in the third frame. Down by 11. It could have been a lot worse. A couple of strikes here to cut it down to 11. Lee. So right now we see some of the other World Championship Mer Series matches in progress. Those are all fun matches. WCS in the Southeast, very, very alive. And I'll talk to you about that momentarily after I see Christy throw a shot here. Third frame coming up. Strike could be nice for him, and he gets it. Now, I have here the list of the top 22 heavyweights uh, for the World Championship Series in May. Around almost a third of them are full of menace to society team bowlers, which is, of course, the same team that Nick Christie is on. So there is a chance if he keeps on holding onto the belt, and if he doesn't defeat Charles Withers, and if he just stays as a heavyweight champion, not the world champion, he may have to go against some of his teammates. That ball looks nice. Two in a row for Christie, and now it's a one-pin game. And if Robeson doesn't strike, then Robeson will not hold an edge anymore. Big difference here between game one and game two. Game one, the game is over because Robeson threw a pair of opens. Game two, at least Christie's keeping himself in the game at this moment. Robeson's trying to take him out of that moment with a strike here. That's like, oh, it goes down anyway. Light mix, he got away with that at the end of game one, getting away with that now, beginning of game two. A little Eminem in the background. The real Slim Shady. Now the question is, who is the real Lee Robeson? He's hoping it's not the one that showed up game one. He's hoping that that may have been like the Slim Shady to his Eminem. Just saying. He wants to be the real Slim Shady. It would behoove himself to get a strike here. That will give him a double, and more importantly, that will keep the edge, albeit a one-pin edge, but it's still an edge. 
Well, that's not one pin. That's two, and that's a six, seven, and that's most trouble. So Robeson takes a starts the game with a double, and now all of a sudden that is meaningless because a Nick Christie mark will put him back in the hole where he spent most of game one. That was a pretty big hole. Speaking of a pretty big hole, that's what we have here. Six, seven right now. Six and the seven pin. Robeson, can he make the spare here? Hey, that ball looks... Ah, uh, no. About to say, if that ball holds on, the ball did not hold on. Gutter Monster got himself a little lunch. That Gutter Monster likes to munch. Maybe he got a bagel out of it. Now. I will say this. Robeson's got a bagel. Fifth frame, 95. Better than game one. However, and a big however here. Christy throws a strike. Christy takes the lead in the game, and he does. Three in a row for Christy again. This will be the third time there is this match. Christy's got three in a row. Uh, the first one, the first three frames of game one. Next time around, the seventh, eighth, and ninth that pretty much took game one and solidified it out, even though that game was pretty much done in the middle, but just solidified it. Now another one looking to take control here. Second half of game number two. Nick Christie has already won game number one, and he's looking to get another strike here. He does. Ten pin goes down. There's a little bit of a fist pump. And all of a sudden, Christie, who was trailing, is now leading. Yes, theoretically, it says minus three. But again, the double is not in. So right now, Lee Christie's probably going to be in at least in the 120s. He's already in the 115s. So he's up by at least 20, possibly 30 pins over Robeson. Robeson better start striking, and he better start doing it in a hurry. And maybe this will start it. It does. Beautiful shot from him on six. Now let's see what happens to on lane five. Lane five has been his nemesis so far this game. He's, he's left one nine pin that should not have been, but more importantly, he left a six seven that probably deserved to be there, but that right now is the reason why he's not winning game two. Winner of this match gets a date with Charles Withers and his World Championship title. And that will be a great match to see. Whenever we have, regardless of who wins. So it'll be a great match to see. Whoever's going to be with his challenger, there's a strike from Robeson. Double for him. Right now, still down by around 30 pins. Let's see what Charles Withers does. Strike over here gives him control and keeps him control. Anything but a strike, and maybe there's a shot for Robeson to get back into this. He is not nearly as far down here as he was in game one at this point. Game one, it was pretty much sun sealed, delivered on yours. Christy right now looking at him increase. He does. He increases the lead. Five in a row for Christy. And another strike would. But I mean, it still would be up 30, but Robeson right now running out of frames. Another strike here from Christie, and Robeson is in deep trouble in this game, is in danger of falling down to zip. Christie looking for six in a row, keeps the 30 pin lead. Oh no, oh he almost got away with it completely with the four pin going down but he almost also left before six yeah he was not happy with himself on that shot i think i would consider that more of a moral victory than a total uh, upset because it's a four pins up there it's makeable christy's still right now very much in control of this game and he'll make this one so right now christy with a potential 197 if he goes out the door to 257 the best Robeson can do is a 245. So Robeson's got to throw some strikes and hopes that Christie's first ball in the 10th frame looks very similar to his first ball in the 8th frame. Then he's got a shot. Christie goes Dutch. That would be 247, 245. Well, Dutch would be, that looks like 237. There's a big shot here from Robeson. Needs a strike. He gets it. That's 3-0 from Lee. 
Now, Lee will be bowling the ninth frame, and he doesn't have to bowl the tenth until he sees what Christie does in the ninth and tenth. So, a strike here would be huge. That would definitely force Nick Christie to throw a double somewhere, either the ninth and the first and the tenth, or two and the tenth, in order to shut Robeson out. That's assuming he gets a strike. If he doesn't get the strike, then we'll see what he gets. And then we'll see what Nick needs. Billy is better, much better off getting that strike. As you see over here, theoretically, the lead is only a 22 pin lead. It could be a 12 pin lead at this point. And then theoretically, if he keeps striking, cuts it down the two in the ninth, and then he could take over in the tenth if Lee does not throw a double. And obviously, when I'm saying Lee must throw a double, I'm, I'm making the assumption that the frame he does not throw a double and he gets a mark. If he opens in the ninth frame, then even if he goes out the door in the tenth, depending on the severity of the open, that will not lock out Lee Robeson. Here you go, first fall from Lee. It's pretty much got to be a strike. It is buried, and it goes. So, Lee has done everything that he can do at this point. Pretty much. I mean, he can win the game. He does need some help from Christie. Will Christie give him the help? That is the question. What he really needs is that first ball in the 10th frame not be a strike, regardless of what Christie does. Even if Christie marks in the 9th, if he can strike out in the 10th, he'll still have this. First ball here, that looks, ooh, oh, he did not need that. That's a 4-9, four, that's a four and that's disaster. That's that's a mess in a whole multitude of ways. First of all, and the most important one, is that if, if Robinson goes out the door, he wins. Because now the best that Christie can do is a 245. Robinson can go out for 247. I'm sorry, Robinson can also go out for 245. So we have a tie here, and that is assuming, of course, that he makes a spare. He doesn't now. It's an even bigger mess because, as I just said, except now I'm going to have to change the numbers. If Christy goes out the door, it's no longer 245. It's a 234. If Lee goes out the door, that is a 245. And if we do that, we're tied with Lee Please. So right now, the worst that Robinson needs, or Robinson needs, is two strikes in the tenth frame. Christy right now is strikes on. And ooh, that just falls. I'm sure he was wondering where was that in the eighth frame. That goes down. So if Christy goes out the door, and that will be a 234, that means if my math is correct, strike nine spare will do it. Actually, no, strike nine spare will be a tie. So Robinson will need two strikes. Strike, strike, zero will be a win. I don't know why you'd want to go to the fill. Probably do something more with the fill if he does that. But that's what he needs. Now, if Nick Christie doesn't strike here, what Robeson needs will be less. What Robeson would really love to see is like a Crouching Tiger hidden 10 pin or something that would allow Robeson to not need a strike in the first frame, the 10th frame. And he's going to get it, 4 pin. So now the best Christie can do is a 224. What that also means, depending on the count, now this is interesting. We do have a tie potential here. So, a strike from Robeson, it is over, and it does not matter what the heck happens. A nine spare, let's get my math on this. A nine spare would be 75, 95, 15. No, the two would not be good enough. He's got to get a strike. So, strike, nine, spare will give him a 224, and that will be his high. So, two strikes they win, nine, strike nine spares a tie, anything else, and Christy is up to zip. First things first, gotta get a strike here. Oh, lifts up, that looks good. Well, there it is. I was gonna say, there is another way for them to do it. It doesn't matter now, there's a strike. So as you can see over here, the difference is 39 pins. However, his 20 pins on the strike is not added in the ninth, and his 20 pins on the strike in the 10th is not added either. 
So the game is over. Lee's got to 225 at this point. That was right the first time. Nice first strike would have given him a bite. It does not matter. The game is out. Strike would be lovely. He got it. And now we have Billy Robeson fan club showing up. And they're probably glad they showed up. He's chatting a little bit to his fans. I would think he's smiling right now. Could be he's talking a little bit of smack over to Nick Christie, but he's not. Now, if you could tell lower, lower right hand corner, usually you look at this from March. And as I've already said, moments as I've already said, uh, that negative nine or positive nine does not count any of the numbers that are not in. This is something that we see at Lodi all the time. So now he's not, not going to be down 9. He's going to be up 21. And there it is. At the end of game 2, Lee Robeson, 245. Nick Christie, 224. We are tied one game apiece. As, as I said before, Robeson's not going anywhere. He, he, is too, he is too much of a veteran to be rattled. So right now we're starting game 3. We're no longer at a best of 7. We're at a best of 5. Both bowlers each have a game apiece. While oh, we're taking a little bit of a rest break, the your champ, Nick Christie, will start game three. Right now, as you can see going on here, we have some WD other WCS matches. We also have the brawl on the right-hand side. And that's going on. You have 16 teams. Eight of them will make the cup. That's going on on the right. Right now, looking at people's feet at this moment. Oh, now we see a body, and it is Nick Christie's as we start game three. 245 seems to be the magic number, because that's what Nick Christie won game one by. And I'll be typing in some notes here. 245 to 224. In favor of the challenger, Lee Robeson. You're tied at one. For everyone that has just joined us, I'm Gordon Pepper. No, do not adjust your dials. I am the Northeast. And that is the Southeast matchup. And we see some people talking and talking some yak over to Nick Christie. And in this case, with them saying the ball will be right back, that means he did not get a strike in the first frame. And clearly he did. Because he's got a pin start now. He's trying to get rid of the eight pin right now, anyway. Next starts off with a mark, and away we go. Got another potential early lead for Robeson. Basically, it looks like whoever started the match to get the lead has been able to hold on so far. Game one, it is Nick Christie started with three in a row. Game two, Lee Robeson three in a row. Nick Christie, aka. Generate, aka member of Menace, which is why that name is up there. Sort of fishing around maybe for a mark. Lee Robeson, no problem there. He's got his line. Robeson with the strike. Christie may be trying to figure out what's going on here on lane five. If he does, if that is what his mentality is there. So we'll see what's going on. Oh, I'm getting a sorry. I didn't realize it was flipped. Aha! So I'm looking at this through a flip screen. Doesn't look like a flip screen, but why not? What I do know is that that looks buried, and it is two in a row for Robinson. going on over here. Robeson again, quick lead. Right out of the gate, Christie is looking to continue here, and he does. There's a strike. Christie right now is looking okay. Still down by 10. Strike right here. You can build some more pressure on Robeson. A non-strike right here. 
And all of a sudden, Robeson can go back to what he did on game two, which is start to take a very early and quick lead. Here's Chrissy right now. We're going to start a double here. First double in game three for him. He got it. Double for Nick Christie, and all of a sudden, every we got tripping from everywhere. I like it when we get tripping from everywhere. All right, Robeson right now, going into his half of game three. Track will keep the lead at 10, anything less than that, and Christie will take the lead back. Based on his double. Here comes Robeson. That ball looks like it's going to hook in, and it does. Again, two very different angles of entry here. It looks like at the beginning, down and in was going to be the winner. In this case, cross court looks like it's doing very well for Robeson. He's still up by 10 as we go into the fourth frame. Right now, we are in game three of our best of seven, brought to you by Storm. Storm, one of our biggest sponsors of the UBA. Thank you. Also, obviously, the UBA, you can go to ubatv.info for the UBA today. You can go into, I'm sorry, ubatoday.info for the UBA today. You can go into ubatv.tv for the UBA's TV. Robeson right now looking to start here. Front four, no, sir. 316. He didn't like that shot. He was tripping, tripping about how he didn't like that shot. Robinson right now looking to clean up his mess. Ah, that was guys. Usually, from when you hear it from me, it's like, that ball looks good, and it is. I didn't say that. That ball did not look good, and it wasn't. That ball looks high, and we got a shot. Big break for Christy. He was trailing in the match. Now a strike here, assuming he doesn't open. He'll be leading in this game. Game three. Looks like a ball change. Like it's, Ooh, wow. Eight pin. Oh, I, I agree with that. What, what the heck are you going to do about that shot? It's right. Wow. I don't know. Th those eight pins have been painful out there. Of course, to still maintain the lead, you need to make the spare anyway. Basically right now, he's got a six pin lead to go into the fifth frame. I'm sorry, fourth frame. No, I was right, fifth frame. Christy looking to throw a strike here. That ball looks a little big. Oh, he gets away with it anyway. That went from a 7-10 to a strike. And all Lee right, can do right now is just grin at him. And Nick gave him the who me worry look as he came down. Just throw his shoulders. Oh, oh the pins went down. That's good for me. I'll take it. He will. He's not going to give it back. No UBA boy is going to give a free strike back when they've earned it. Nor should they. All right, Robeson needs to get back on the horse in a hurry. That ball looks good, and there we go. That ball's good. Strike on that. He's still complaining to himself about the spare. I don't blame him. Ball didn't look that bad, but it did look high, and it did jump. So right now, Dennis still up by six. Both bowlers are on strikes as we go into the second half of game three. Thank you. 
That ball looks good. It's going to hurry a little bit, and it does. Big strike by Robeson. It almost looked like it was going to go right up the beak. It did not. It held nicely. So, Devil's basically the gauntlet saying, hey, Nick, better throw another strike or I'm taking the lead back. That's basically what it said. You may not have said it that way, but that's what he said. Chris is right now going in his staff and sixth frame. He is theoretically up by six. And he will stay up by six with a strike. If he doesn't throw a strike, then all your lead goes back to lead. That ball looks good to fiddle a hole, and it does. Josh, your order's ready in the snack bar. Josh, your order's now ready. So that, that's a very, very nice double there, and Nick's still holding on to six-pin lead, going to the frame. It's a little bit of a seesaw game, game, two, game three now. So, like, both bowlers are a little bit more comfortable. They're a little bit more settled in. They're a little bit more into it. Okay, this is, uh, this is how I think my line needs to be. Nick wanting to either keep his lead at six or increase it to 16. He will do so either way. There's a strike. Three in a row for Nick again. Nick is still up by six. Here comes Robeson. Again, strike in the seventh. Keeps it at a six-pin lead. And he really can't afford to not throw a strike here because we're running out of frames. There's only three frames left after this one. I mean, you could say, yeah, it's still only six-pin lead. Anything can happen. That is true. But anything usually happens when you put pressure on your opponent. Can't let his opponent get away scot-free here. This is another strike. That is 3 0 for Robeson. Right now, the only issue that Lee Robeson has had is that fourth frame, but that was a bad fourth frame. That's an open. He went 7 1 shot. Christie has taken advantage of it. Christie's still up by six. Going into the eighth frame, and once again, we're back in, back in that stage. Where a strike forces Nick to throw another strike. Anything less than that. And it gives him, Nick Christie some breathing room. And considering you're in the 8th frame, that is not wise to do so right now at this point. Robeson right now looking for 4 in a row. Does not get it. Oh, no, he, I can. Not only does he not strike, he leaves a very messy looking split. There he goes. Here he goes. What do you got? What do you got? Oh! Yeah, Robeson, you can already tell I'm not happy with that ball. He's lapping his ball down. I wanted to say something else. I'm not going to. I'll just say he's not thinking nice thoughts about his pulling equipment at this moment. It's a good, safe way of saying that. Needless to say, even though he's trailing, but he needs to make this one also really be trailing, and he's not going to make it. No, nope, picked off the nine only. So now, Lee Robeson, 169 in the eighth frame, the best he can do, the best as a 229. Christie can go out the door for a 269. So again, just like we said before in game two, I'll say it in our game one, I'll say it in game three. Lee needs some help from the champion. Shot here, ninth frame. Oh, the ball needs a skin. Oh, it does. I don't know. At the beginning, his ball's been squirting out. That's when we're like, oh no, that ball's going to move up. This made that ball change. That ball hasn't moved. That ball has been nothing but lights out. And should he throw another one in the ninth frame, that's pretty much game over. Because Nick would have, in essence, a almost a 229. And that is exactly the most that Lee Robinson can shoot, is that 229. Big shot right here. Strike can put this game away. Oh, wow. Five pin. He went from bucket to five pin. And I'm sure everybody is raising their hands up. Oh, yes, they are.
Now, there's no way Nick Christie, your current Southeast Heavyweight Champion, and your former World Heavyweight Champion, there is no way Nick Christie's going to miss a five pin. Although, if he does, everybody's going to make fun of him on the field day. He does not miss him. So, right now, Nick has got a theoretically 208. 218 with a nine. Well, does force him to show up. As I said, if the strike was in the ninth frame, he didn't have to show up. He could throw a ball and just fill. Now he's got to show up. Now, the other catch is that Robeson's got to show up the ninth and tenth. So Robeson at this point must throw nothing but strikes. And then hope that Nick winds up with one of the things that he chopped earlier. However, this ball's got to be a strike first. It is not. That is a nine pin. And that will almost end the game. Not really. Though now, he's got a lot of work to do. And Nick theoretically does not need to throw him out. You don't make the spare? All right, so, th this will sound very familiar. Hold on with me, folks. So, in order for Lee to win this match, he must strike out. He must go out the door. That will give him a 219, and then he needs, in the worst way, Mr. Dennis to put the ball anywhere except where he wants it to go. Strike here, that ball looks good. Well, he doesn't, oh, well, he doesn't strike out, and then the game really is over. Because the best he can do right now is a 207. I'm sorry, not Dennis. I call him Dennis the Menace, huh? It's not Dennis. Nick Christie can go out for a 248. I said Dennis. Why did I do that? Even though the way that it's been going, Nick looks go strike, strike seven, that's a 245. And spare. Robeson right now, again, the best that he can do is a 207. That's already been beat. So Nick Christie will win game three. The only question becomes, what's the score going to be? Game will also know a little bit of a slower pace than the Northeastern counterparts. There could be a whole bunch of different reasons for that. There's a nice strike. However, once again, a, a late open, a late open does Lee in. Not that it would matter because Nick Christie strike, and that ends game three. Even though, again, I said earlier, game is already over. So this was a back and forth one and, until it wasn't. Look right now, that ball looks good again. Nope, 10 pin, doesn't really matter. So we're not gonna get another 240, we will get a 230 though. That's always fun. Is he going to make this fair? Yes, he will. All right, so at the end of game three, Nick Christie, 238. Lee Robeson, 207. Nick Christie leads, 2-1. to one. Meanwhile, while they're resting, I can rest and take some notes. You know, I'm going to do a little bit of trivia. Maybe not a trivia question, because I don't think I'll have time.
But I'll, I'll just get, I'll just ask a trivia question here. I did say that Nick Christie won the title by beating Miguel Acobo. I did not say where and when. When did this happen? Here's my trivia question. I'll let you think about it. It's going to start game four. Lee Robinson starting out. Oy. Well, that's not how. Great way to start out, 3-6. And I say that not because it's a bad spare to leave, it's not, but because what contributed to his demise in Game 3 was the fact that he chopped the 3 off of his 3-6-10 that he left, which basically didn't give him any shot of recovering, and then Nick just ran over him and finished with the Floyd strikes. Now, hopefully you won't do that again, and he will not. He makes a spare. That should have been the ball. That should have been the ball that Robeson threw to me, the spare in game three. But he didn't. And that's why he's down to one. Christy up at this point. Got a shot to take the lead again. Now, for everybody that tuned in, I'm Gordon Pepper. This is game four of our Best of Seven Southeast Heavyweight Championship match. Brought to you again by Storm and by the Underground Bowling Association. Storm again, a proud sponsor and a huge sponsor of the UBA. Thank you, Storm. And it's because of Storm that we can see matches like this. Um, because of Storm that we can see Nick Christie possibly taking the lead here in the second frame. This is another double. Now, giving you guys, giving everybody here a sense of ramifications. Whoever wins this match will get a shot at the world title, which is currently being held by Charles Withers. That will be happening soon. I don't know when exactly it will happen, but whoever wins will get a world championship shot at the world title. If they, and here's what happens. If you win that, it's an exchange. So for argument's sake, and I'll say if Nick Christie wins this game, because he is up, and now he's up in this game too with the strike. If Nick Christie wins this match, and he beats Withers, he becomes a world championship holder, and Withers will go back down to the Southeast Championship belt. And then he will have to defend a couple of times in order to get it back from Lee, uh, in order to get it back from Nick over at Battle Bowl. And obviously, if Lee wins, then he'll do the exact same thing. He's got to get it back from Lee. And that ball looks okay to me. A little bit light. It's good. Again, Lee has not had a problem with with lane six. The problem has been lane five. And since I gave the answer to, to my trivia question, so Nick Christie defeated Mikel Kobo at Battle Bowl. And that's where he's on the top for a little bit. Then he lost it. Then he lost it back. Eurobison has Vegas not had the world Erica, title. He has had it. He's not had the Southeast Championship before. And if he hasn't, I know it's gotten to the title match, but I'm pretty sure he's won the belt. And I'm also pretty sure that is a going to be a year. I was about to say that was going to be not okay. 3 6 10. Now, there's two problems here. Number one, he's going to fall, fall further behind to Nick. More importantly for him, this is the lack of a spare here was the beginning of the end form in game two. I'm in a, yeah, in game, I'm sorry, no, wrong game three, he won't get to. We're at game four right now. Time flies when you're having fun. Even when you're not having fun, but I'm having fun. Well, at least he chopped it differently. There goes the 3-6. Three, 3-6 three, goes down. This is the second time that he's opened on the 3-6-10 combination. And whereas it may not be this fatal this early in the game, it certainly doesn't feel good. However, if Nick throws a couple more strikes here, then Nick will be up by 42 pins, and then that could be fatal. Yipes! Third shot here. Let's see if what's supposed to happen happens, and it does. Christy right now giving the wave of move ball, move, move ball. Said, okay, I listen. Three in a row for Nick Christie as we starting on the fourth, and this sort of has shades of game one written all over for Lee Robeson. And that's not good because when Lee Robeson lost game one, it was this way. He, he had two opens. 
and a spare in the first three frames. Christie had three strikes, and the result was 245-192. Way 53 pin win. And right now, Christie's up by 42. In the fourth, another strike here. And the and the worst Christie can be is up by 42 by the time he gets the ball back. Fourth ball here. That ball looks good. And it is. A little bit high gets away with it. You know, speed is a really... Speed helps cure a bunch of ills sometimes. Especially when your ball is not necessarily where you want it to go. Because I'll tell you right now, that ball, definitely when it looked like it was going up the beak, was definitely not where Christy wanted to go. And we have a quick ball change here by Robus. And Robus has got to do something. He's got to do a ball change, or maybe spill turpentine on the lanes, or whatever he needs to do, he needs to do it. Or maybe hope, in this case, that Nick Christie's line falls apart a little bit quicker than what it has, because Nick Christie's line hasn't been fantastic at this moment, but it's been good enough. Robinson right now looking to continue making his line good on lane six. He does. The problem's not lane six. We could already tell you the problem's not lane six. Problem's lane five. So now that ball seems to work on lane six with the ball change. He needs that ball to work now on lane five. That's what Lee needs to have happen. And now is as good a time as any because one more open and it may not matter what Lee does. At least here, 42. Maybe if Nick loses his carry for a little bit, 42 is still in the ballpark. An open here or, or a non-strike here. Now you're looking at 50 or 60 pins. It almost looks like Robeson got cut off, and hey, there's that 310 again. I'm wondering if the fact that he got cut off by the bowler in lane 7 had any sort of impact. He's not going to say that he did, though. He will never say that that's the reason. But that's probably the reason. All right, chime number 3 at the 3610. First two times did not go off very well for him. And if it doesn't go off very well for him again, Nick Christie can sort of sigh and relax here a little bit in game 4. This time, Robinson makes a spare. He's now one for three with that shot. So the good news is he's got a spare. The bad news is that he's got an 88 in the fifth. And with two more balls from Nick Christie, he can, Nick Christie could almost double his score. Which is, again, not what you want to see happening here. Missy right now, that ball looks good. Aye. Well, all right, got away with it. Got a six. Nick didn't like that shot. I'm not really sure it matters right now because right now Lee can't do anything on lane five. And until Lee does anything at five, throwing spares is going to be more than good enough to seal up this game. They go up three to one. Nick's been up there in the board. Chrissy Lee can make it up. And he'll get it with Boy. It's about to say he'll get it with ease, and then all of a sudden the ball hooked a little bit. I'm like, mm, maybe not. No, you got it. So right now, with both bowlers on spares as we go in the second half of game of game four, Nick Christie only, and I say only because it could have been a lot worse, and Lee needs to be happy that it's not a lot worse. Nick Christie up by 41 pins as we go into frame six. So we better hope. And I mean, better hope that that's the beginning of Nick now trying to make some adjustments and not Nick going, oops, I threw a bad shot. Here's how I adjust. Oh, wait, here's all the fences out. Get down again. Let's see what Christie's ball statement's going to be. Oh, it's going to be, I need to adjust. Yipes. One, two, four, five. Little bit of sunlight showing in here for Lee Robeson. You know, if if Lee can come back, then all of a sudden we're tied two games apiece. If Nick does not come back, that means I'm sorry, if Lee does not come back, that means Nick will be up three one. And, and even though Nick is up by around thirty plus pins, he can't afford to be sloppy at this point either. He will not be, he'll make the spare. But that first ball clearly was a, hey, we're going to go just shot. All right, 37-pin game now. 
And for Robeson to get back into this one, one of two things need to happen. Number one, Nick is going to have to start throwing a bunch of opens. And number two, or number two, barring that, Rob Robeson's going to have to start throwing a bunch of strikes. And here's one right here. It's lane five. Ooh, he, I'm sorry, that's lane six. And he made a little bit of an adjustment. And he almost got bitten by it. All the pins still go down. However, as I said before, here comes lane five now. And here's where that adjustment needs to be made. If he can go strike here, he still has enough frames to get himself back into it. It's only the seventh frame. And more importantly, a double will cut down some of that lead. And then... Christy will be down and will be up by less than 30 pounds. Big shot here. Big shot back coming up here. Can he make the strike? Can he make the adjustment? No, he can. Well, he can't make the adjustment. It's not a strike. Although the 3 6 10 is gone, the 2 pin is now up there instead. And it really doesn't matter what pin is up there. He, he needs strikes now more than spares. I mean, the spare is nice right now, but you're down 30 pins. And again, unless Nick really wants to start throwing some opens and starting to help you out, you got to figure out how to get some strikes on the board and quickly. You also got to figure out how to make out that tenth out of that two pin, but he does. That's not a tenth, that's a two pin. <laughs> so, right now, as we're looking at the scores. Looks like a 17th game, except it'll be 37 because Nick Christie is not gone in his half of the seventh frame yet. Let's see right now. And again, let's see if it's just a minor adjustment or if he has to do something major here. Let's see what that ball looks like. Oh no, 4 6. And all of a sudden, Roverson, I think, may have been starting to give up on game three. All of a sudden, no, don't do that yet. This game just got a lot more interesting. This game just really got a lot more interesting. Nick is talking to himself in anguish. And you can see why. Because assuming he's not going to make this, and he's not, now the lead is under 20 pins. He'll only get one. So right now we have a 152 with Nick Christie's side. The best thing he can do is a 242. You have a 128. On... Lee Robeson's side. Best she can do is 218. So it's still, I'm sorry, I said under 20. It's not under 20. It's 24 pin lead. But still, it's a lot shakier than that 41 pin lead. Let's see what he does here. Well, that's a big strike. He needed that one. So regardless of what happens, the lead will stay at 24 pins. But again, Robeson can make life a little bit more miserable for Nick. If he strikes out, or if he, yeah, if he strikes out, Nick's got to at least a dose somewhere. So, strike, nine spare strike, will not do it. That will only be a 212. And Lee can go out the door for 218. So, yeah, if Lee goes out the door, Dennis has got to figure out how to double somewhere along the line. And De Dennis can definitely not do what he did in the seventh grade to shoot any more opens. Right now, it's looking for something. Now, now that he knows, all of a sudden, he's got a shot at this one. Up, oh, ball change. New ball time. Quarter is two lane twenty-four. Quarter is two lane twenty-four. Robeson coming up. Let's see what that ball does. That ball, no. Uh, no. Whoa, 3 6 10 again? Yes, another 3 6 10. You can't say Lee has not had his opportunities this game. He's had a couple of opportunities, and then when the Open came in, he's had even more opportunities. I'm not sure how many or more chances Nick is going to give him, though. Well, almost looks like Nick is giving him too many. Maybe Nick may turn around and go, no, we're all done with chances. I gave you three this game. That's enough. All right, he's one for three on lane five with this shot. Let's see what he does here on lane six. That ball looks good, it is. Makes a spare. I'm not sure if those pins were correctly spaced on that, but it doesn't matter. He made the spare. Now, going into the ninth frame, still a 27-pin game. And it's Nick that can actually increase it. So let's see what happens here. Ninth frame coming in for Orbison. 
because he can use two of five. Which means one more mark, or a strike, or a double, and that should just about do it for Christie. But he still has to see what he does. And he, oh boy, will he ever, right? You know, the funny thing is this, I, I'm commentating just along with everybody else, and I, I, hold it, yipes, six, seven, nine, ten. And lane five is pretty much not only going to end game three, it's, so there's a good shot, it's going to end game four. Because Robeson right now, maybe with a 150. And, yeah, 150. Best he can use 180. And, yeah, this one's over. Nick does not even need to throw a strike at this point. Nick does not even have to throw a mark at this point. Good count. And the 9th and 10th frames will do it. Uh, yeah, 9 and 9. 9 and 9 will do it. That's 172. Let's see here. 163, 172, 181. 181, which will beat us one for you. So, does not need a mark, but let's see how pretty he can make this. That's pretty. Now the game is already mathematically over. We still have 10th frame to go. Now, if I'm Lee, and for, well, actually, I can't do it. If I'm Lee, I figure out what to do on lane 5. I can't figure out what to do on lane 5 yet until we go into game 5. And if Lee doesn't figure it out, there may not be a game 6. Christie coming up, that ball looks good, and all of a sudden, here comes Nick Christie again. Strike, strike, strike. Fair, fair. Well, I was just taking the siesta, and now another three in a row. Actually, I'm sorry, four strikes to start the game. And then three, what was that? And then three in a row. Christie right now, looking for another one. He gets it four in a row. That'd be twice that happened in this game. And Nick will once again finish in his 240s. High 230s to low 240s. And that's where that's where all the winning scores have been. Either 230 or 240. He gets 230, that's a win. Let's see. I'll say he does. He gets nine. I'll say two. I'm sorry, 8 would be 240. Strike would be 242. And that's what he gets. Nick Christie will finish off with 242. It really does not matter, obviously, what Lee does, but if I am Lee, I definitely try to figure out something again. Either some way to get a nice shot going or some way to mess up Nick Christie's line but make it more of a permanent mess up. right now. Game two, he had an answer. And he was helped out by Nick Christie faltering near the end of that game, but Nick Christie right now has had all the answers since that point, and he's had the answer early and often. Robeson right now, and another... What's going on with the 3-6-10? That's number five. It's number five for Lee, and all he can do is have a smile and that about it. Yeah, Lee's trying to get some help from some of his teammates. It does not look like the help that he's looking for. Now, former world champion Dennis Kilo also on Dillagaff. Maybe Dennis can help him out here, but whatever he's been listening to, it has not been working. It'll be two for five. No, I. No, it won't. It'll be one for five. Well, at the end of game four, it is Nick Christie, 242. He opens at 157. Nick Christie is up three games to one. And the margin of error for Lee Robeson right now is zero, a.k.a. in the words of Jonathan Dansbury, El Chipo. 
There are three games left in this match, and Lee Robeson, to win the title, must win them all. One loss from him, Nick Christie successfully detained, retains, and Nick Christie will have a get-together with Charles Withers. Christie will be starting off game five. He's starting off his game. He threw up a little bit out there. Oh, that looks nice, though. A little bit more speed through the ball out there. He's not, he's not trying to finesse. Like, that's that's usually not his game anyway. His game is power, 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 power. And then when you have enough of that, I'll give you some more power. And then I'll move over, I'll give you some more power. Maybe a little bit, a bit of finesse, but finesse has gotten him into trouble. When he's gotten into power game, no problem. Robeson right now. Let's see what he can do to answer. This is game five. He must win this one or there's no game six. Robeson right now. That ball looks okay. There's the mix on six now. Here we go again. What did he do about lane five? Lane six, no problem. He's thrown almost everything there except for the last frame, but that was more of an area shot sort of frame because at that point, the game didn't matter. So let's not discuss lane six in the 10th frame let's discuss however lane five because that has been a huge issue for him at this moment and if it continues to be a huge issue he's going to run out of time and frames In here, looking for the second frame. No, looking for the second frame, looking for the second strike, looking for the second anything. Instead, he has another tip, which is much more than a second. Now, if you're Nick Christie, you want to get this over with and done. Done, done, done. D O N, done. You've got Lee Robeson on the ropes. A couple more strikes here. You could possibly deflate him. Now, as I said before, Lee Robeson is a veteran, he's not going to go down that easy. But you can sort of try to pressure him into really overthrowing shots that he doesn't have to. Because right now, Lee hasn't figured out fifth lane. Lane five has been an issue. Christy, you're possibly looking to smell some blood early here in this game. That ball looks good. Oh, no. Tempted. That ball looks good, maybe a little bit lighter than what he's usually been doing, but there's no reason why that could not have gone down. That was a good shot. We can sort of breathe a sigh of relief here. Because he'll still be in a tie. Assuming Nick makes the spare. Now let's see how good Nick's uh, making short shots are. Because most of them have been... On the middle, I'm already saying is my my special rules are fine. Thank you, Gordon. Shut up. What are you saying right now? This is very easily. We are tied going into frame three. Frame three, and this is game six. And right now, I'm speaking of three. That's how many games that Nick Christie has. He leads three to one. Robeson must win this game or it's over. Hello, everybody. Tuning in. I'm Gordon Pepper. And this is a UBA World, Cha uh, World Championship WCS match. And this is for the Southeast Heavyweight title. Whoever wins this will get a world title shot against Charles Withers. Ooh. Out of, out of danger a little bit there. He's a 3-6. Nick Christie right now. Down by two pins. Lee yet to go in second. I'm sorry, we yet to go in third. He's done with the second. That's why he's the lead. Christy looking to make another spare here, and he, ooh, he will. That was a little bit light. That almost chopped. Between both of them, they can like start a lumberjack storage yard. Getting some of that lumber out of there with all those chops. 
Robeson right now in the third frame. Look at him to shoot another strike here. No, I don't know why he changed his mark there. I'm trying to figure that out. He was bearing it, strike, 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 no problem. Now all of a sudden he wants to get cute stating he needs temper. Maybe the oil was changing and he needs to make an adjustment, but I don't know. I, I like that. Damn, well, I know, but I thought I thought there was no reason for him to change his mark in lane six. Lane five, yes. Throw so everything that you have in lane five. Not lane six. I mean, it looks like you'll get the spare. Looked a little bit sneaky there, but he got the spare. Frame four coming up. Lee is once again on his favorite lane in the universe right now, which means he's not on a lane that he particularly cares for. That would be lane five. I'm not sure if he's used all the equipment in the bag, but maybe he should. Or at least this one, hopefully it will work. If it does, he'll still have a lead, albeit a slim one. If he doesn't, then Nick can take the lead. There's a shot from Robeson that looks good. Uh, there we go. There's a shot from Robeson, and he will hold on to his lead. So Robeson up by one pin as we go into next half of the fourth frame. Now Nick can't afford to lose the game if he wants. I'm sure he doesn't want. You never want to see this go to a game six or a game seven when you think that you can take it out. However, right now he can't take anything out to eat up there. So not a terrible leave. But again, you don't want to fall to fall behind. Nick's looking for a spare. Nick down my three already. He's not going to be giving up any more pins. And he'll make the spare. That looks good. Now we're going into his fifth frame. Nick down by three. So right now, as we have this stated, Christy is up three games to one. He is trailing game five. And if he stays trailing, it will be game six. Nick's trying to find a strike here. Hey, there it is. Now there's another one, and yeah, that's good, except, and a big except here. He's been fluttering around here, going back and forth uh, between strikes and spares. Now he hasn't made any major mistakes, like Robinson did, did games three and four. But he's still leaving himself, letting Lee thinking a little bit, hmm, maybe I've connect here. I can take the lead. And he should be able to connect here on lane six because he's been throwing all, almost every shot on this lane has been a strike for Robeson. Let's see if that continues. It does. Lee right now extending his lead as we go into the second half of the sixth frame. Robeson up now, up by potentially 13. Yes, I know it says minus 17, but as I've said throughout the course of the match, the scores are not coming in uh, in the differentiator until they show up on the screen. Then the margin between plus and minus shows up. Case in point here, there's an ah, two in a row on lane five for Lee. All of a sudden, he's found something, and all of a sudden, as I said, he went down from under 17 to plus 13. Now, if Lee figures out what to do here, that spells trouble for Nick Christie. Now, again, he's in the fifth frame. He can afford to take a loss here. He'd rather not. But at least he knows now what he needs to do. And what he needs to do is double only in six, which is what he's been doing before, and he does it again. All right, deficit is now still only 13 as we go into the seventh frame of game five. Again, this is a game that if Nick Christie wins, he successfully defends the title. If Lee wins, then we go to game six. Now 
Christie right now looking for another three in a row, and he's, well, he's got two in a row on the five pin. That's not what he wants. I know that's not what he wants. And what he also doesn't want is to fall further behind Lee, but that looks like exactly what's going to wind up happening. And let's not even discuss what happens if he misses a five pin. He will not miss the five pin. And meanwhile, while he does that, Lee is looking to put the finishing touches on game five and stave off elimination. Wolfson right now, looking to extend it up to four in a row, maybe no, 10 pin. And that would have been the uh, later alligator for Nick Christie. However, we, uh, Nick is still in this one. Still only trailing by 13. Lee needs to make this or else his 13 pin lead will only be a three pin lead. Will that ball hold on? Oh no, it does not hold on. Lee puts his head in his hands. He knows exactly what he's done. And what he's done is all of a sudden he's let Nick Christie back into this one because it's no longer a 13 pin lead or a 3 pin lead. It is now a 1 pin lead. Yipes. What time? I don't know what time, but uh, it's not a good time. All of a sudden this one too. Okay, well, let's go to game six. And Nick Christie may be in the back going. You know, maybe I can finish this out in five. And all of a sudden, for Lee's sake, he's doing strikes the last two times on lane five. He needs to do it again. Oh, he does not. That's a four pin. You know, if Lee winds up losing this game, he can point out to a number of factors on why he loses this match. This game is sort of a microcosm on it. He did not put his foot down on Nick Christie when he had to, and he's had massive problems over on lane six. And, and he's just falling apart in the late sections of this game. Of course, lane five. I'm sorry, he's had massive issues on lane five. He's been okay on lane six until that last shot. But that was disaster. And all of a sudden, can Nick Christie take this out and win the match? Here's Nick Christie on his eighth frame. Well, three six. At least he's done, and here's another aspect of the game, and unfortunately I have to bring this up. He's done a better job converting his three six than Lee has converting the three six ten. I know some people can say, Gordon, that's me. It, it is, but it's the truth. Spare shooting is a thing in building. And speaking of which, he makes the spare. Back to a one pin game. Actually, I'm sorry, back to a three pin game. Robeson up by three. Very, very lucky that Christie didn't throw a strike there. Going in the ninth frame, if Robeson can hold on, there'll be game six. If Robeson cannot hold on, and Nick Christie outstrikes him or outspares him by at least three pins, then it is game set match. Oh, wow, seven pin. Oh, wow, I thought, I was about to say, and Lee's gonna have some issues because Nick threw a strike. No, he didn't, he threw a seven pin. So this gives Lee a little bit of a cushion. Obviously, it won't give him any sort of cushion if he opens, but hear me out here one second. Let's make sure that Lee, that uh, Nick makes a spare. And he will, so here's what Lee needs to do. He's got a little bit of a cushion because in the ninth frame, he does not have to throw a strike. He can throw a nine spare or an eight spare or a seven spare and make it as long as he strikes out in the 10th. If he strikes out in the 10th, we go to a game six because Nick cannot catch him. However, 
if he opens in the ninth, or if he strikes in the ninth and does not throw the first one in the tenth, Nick's got a shot at him. The best Nick can do is 212. Lee can go out for 226. Here's a shot here. Big shot coming up. Aye, 3610. Now again, seven spares okay if he makes the spare. That is a big, and I'll say this again, if he makes the spare. Because this is, I believe, combination number six, and he's only made this once. Diapers. Again, no issues if he makes the spare here. And then we go to the 10th. If he doesn't make the spare here, then we'll explain that momentarily also. Is he going to make the spare this time? Yes, he will. Two out of six. Sure, he's sort of happy about that. He, he looks like a combination of happy and disgusted. I've had that look, too. It's, it's not the most fun look, being happy and disgusted at the same time. So, going into the 10th frame, as you can see, the difference is one. If Lee strikes out, we go to a game six. However, Lee must strike out. There is no margin. If Lee does not strike out, Nick can, Nick can come and win the game in the match. Or at, at the very least, tie. First ball coming up. And, oh no, that is a four pin. And again, as I've said, lane fives that give him the issues. It continues to. And now all of a sudden, a strike in the first ball from Nick. And the least that he can do is push this game into a tie. I'll explain that momentarily after we see the end of what Lee does. Now Lee abs obviously needs to make the spare. And then right after that, he needs to make the strike. The Spanish strike is important, and I'll explain why momentarily. But it will not, what it will not do is it will not shut Nick out. Pin count here is incredibly important. Incredibly important. So if, Kev, if, um, Lee Robeson gets this, you'll get a two, a two or two. Now, if he does that, and Dennis go, I'm Dennis, and Nick goes to strike nine spare, then we have tied. If Nick doubles, he wins, and the match is over. If he does not get a strike on the first ball, depending on what Lee does here, he will win. But let's see what Lee does here. This needs to go, everything goes in. Oh my goodness, wow, almost a 7-9. That would have been a big mess. In this case, it's still a mess. 201 means this. Yeah, here's the issue. If Nick strikes and then makes any form of 10 in the 10th frame after that, so strike and any spare will be 202. He will win the game by one. That is game set and match. Nine spare strike is a tie. Anything less than that, and Lee will somehow pull up the victory. And whoa, what is that? 2 4 10. Even if he makes the spare, it doesn't matter. Lee's going to hold on and win this one. Wow. Nick had a chance to win this outright. Instead, he loses. He gives game five over to Lee. And the only thought can be, is Nick going to regret that? Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. And he was a Jeopardy. Underrated part two. Yeah, Nick's going to open in. Yipes. Wow. A very uncharacteristic open by Nick at the worst opportunity. At the end of game at the end of game five, Lee Robeson 201. Nick Christie 188. Nick Christie is still up, but now he's only up three to two. And we know what Lee wants, which is a game seven. We also know Nick doesn't want it. As I could do some notes as we're waiting on people. That's like, wow, we're still we're still trying to catch our breaths here. I'm trying to catch mine a little bit here. I figured he was at least good. Or a nine. But it wasn't. 
And because of that, we got a game six. So, while we were waiting here, Dennis is looking to recover at this point. I'm sorry, not Dennis. Lee, uh, Nick is looking to recover. Lee is happy. I can't blame him. And we're going to start game six. Now, Lee, who probably thought there wasn't going to be a game six at this point, is going to start. And if Lee can pull one more out of that, we're going to have a game seven. Nick, of course, wants nothing to do with that scenario. He wants to win now. Of course, he could have won now, but he didn't. Now he'll get another opportunity. Lee here starts off. Oh, and there's a strike. Now, if we can figure this out a little bit, and if Nick continues to do what he just did, we may get a game seven. That could be something. I'm wondering if the back of Nick's mind, how much this is going to turn around and, and cost him. It could cost him dearly what happens at the end of game five. Nick right now, first ball up. Yay! There's a strike. I'm sure he's wondering where the heck was that game five. Both men at strikes going in game two, going in frame two. This is sort of what I was expecting in this match. This match was very, a little bit of high scoring, a little bit of a grinder. Still an entertaining match, and more importantly, a competitive one. Christy, second frame. Oh, he's bad. He's bad now. You can even tell. He's like, I should not be bowling. I am done. Get this ball out of my sight. Here's a ball change. You know, it's, it's there. Now, if the anger is going to carry him a little bit, we shall see. Right now, what needs to happen with Lee is that he carries done what he's mostly done. Except for the beginning of game five, which is carry on lane six. Lane five has been his issue. Lane six, for the most part, he hasn't had many problems with. There's that shot. That ball looks, ooh, that looks like, ay, 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 ay. One, two, four, six, ten. Now, once again, that puts him into a hole with Nick Christie. And I'm not sure, again, it's early, but this is a bad, bad hole to be in at this point. Because it's, it's not like Nick had a spare on you. He's got a double, which means now you're once again looking at that 30 to 40 pin hole. And every time he's been in that hole, he hasn't gotten out of it. The, the two games that he won was he was... I don't know what the heck he's doing there. 24. So right now, after two frames, he could be down by 36 pence. Now, he was in a hole early in game five, but it was a little bit of a hole, and he was able to get out of it. 36, pin, 36 pence is not a little bit of a hole. The only good thing about it is that it's early, and there is... A chance for him to get out of it, but there won't be much of a chance if Nick keeps throwing darts. We coming up, second shot here, or first shot here, and now he's he is coming to his second shot. Two for ten. And this is starting to look more like game one, and the wheels are starting to come off. And instead of this being Lee having a second wind and trying to force a game seven, this almost looks like the end of game five just delayed the inevitable. Yeah, if, if anything, he's got to make some sort of mark here and he doesn't. Two, four, it goes out the door. And right now, his chances of winning this game might have gone out the window, depending on what Nick does right here. Nick Christie already up by a bunch, looking to maybe salt this one of a very early third frame coming up, looking for three in a row. Oh, wow, seven, ten. 
not only does he not put the game away, all of a sudden he's he's said, well, you know what? Maybe I could beat you with a smaller margin. I don't know. That was buried. He left a buried 7-10. I was about to say he nailed it. That's a strike. No, it's not a strike. There's two pins up there. And they're as far away from each other as you can possibly make it. So, oh, almost making the spare. That's a good effort there. Not good enough. So, instead of being buried by around 40 or 50 pins, there's a 23-pin deficit as we go into the fourth frame. Christy right now up by 23. If he maintains that, then he will win this match. So, how does he respond? Strike. Yeah, it's looking at you. I don't know what to tell you, Nick. That ball was friggin' buried in the third frame. I don't know. You got me. I don't know. Lee doesn't know either, and he better figure it out, because the last time that he was here, he didn't even hit the head pin on either shot. Robeson right now. Making another ball change. He's made a lot of ball changes, which is good. He's needed to make that ball change, but not necessarily on lane six. That being said, I don't know what he's doing on lane six. Last time out. Well, he changed his angle on that, and he shouldn't have. There's another wash. One, two, four, ten. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's thinking that he can throw the ball out. Maybe the ball squirted out the past two times. But it's not as down and in and crisp as it was when he was playing, and he's potentially in danger of going three straight opens. Nick gave him a chance to get back into this. I'm not sure if he wants it. At least now he's going to go for the spare. It only needs two. Three consecutive opens. Two washes and a split. And, and now there's that 35-pin deficit that we were talking about. Because now you're either looking at 35 or 45 as we go into the fifth frame of game six. And I'll say this, regardless of what Lee does, two more strikes from, from Nick Christie in the fifth and sixth. And Nick is not going to relinquish that sort of lead. All right, let's see what Lee does here. Well, there's a strike. However, and I haven't used this phrase in a long time commentating on a Southeast match. Lee may have locked the doors after the horses have eaten the children. Because here comes Nick Christie, and Nick has a chance to put this one away. And he may if he gets a strike here. No, he doesn't. 10 pin. All right. Still a little bit of life. Only a 30 pin deficit. So me again, he needs to spare. Assuming he makes the spare, Nick will be up by either 25 or 35, depending on what Lee does in the sixth frame. Nick will make his spare, he does. Very loud and angry spare. As we go into the second half of game six, again, Lee needs to win this. If he does, we have a game seven. Right now, he's down by 35. Five frames left in this game. Potentially five frames left in this match. Here comes Christy. Oh, seven pin. I don't know. I don't know, Nick. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you're throwing the ball too hard. I don't know. Maybe you're not. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. He doesn't get it either. Well, I mean, he hasn't built him down. He's frustrated, but he's been making the spares. He hasn't thrown any bad shots. Even the 7-10, that wasn't a bad shot. That was just a uh, what-the-heck-you-gonna-do shot. And the one thing that's nice about being up by 35 or 25 pins is that as long as you mark, you can't put yourself in any, any trouble. You need your opponent to start stringing strikes, which, as we've seen, is something that Lee has not been able to do recently got away with it last game, but that was also because of a Nick Christie ill-timed open in the 10th frame in game 5. Lee needs a strike, and he needs one now, and oh, he gets one! 
He's sort of like, yay. However, he can start chopping this down. Now, this one's not over. 24 pin game. Another strike here puts it to a 14 pin game. Now, all of a sudden, you got something cooking. The best that Lee can do is a 221. Uh, best that Nick can do is a 235. So, 14 pin game here. If he strikes. Here comes Lee. Here's that shot. A little bit more oomph on that one. No, I did not. I thought he was going to carry the seven. Doesn't do it. That almost looked like the seven ten there for a second. Angle of entry just hasn't been there for Lee this game. And, and this may be very problematic. And unfortunately for Lee, he's running out of frames. Looks like he will make the spare. He does. Well, that run comes to an end, and Nick is trying to see if he if he can make this game come to an end. Christy, right now, seventh frame. That ball looks good. It is. Also looks like he had a little bit of a ball change there. Definitely a little bit. He moved in on that. But it's one of the reasons why Nick Christie is so good. Instead of getting frustrated, he makes the correct adjustments. It's the reason why he's currently the champ. And in another three frames, it'll be the reason why he'll successfully hold on to the belt. A double here will put a lot of pressure on Lee. Oh, he gets it. He almost left the double in the wrong way, 4-9. But you know what? The way Nick is throwing the ball, he deserves that. But break, he gets it. Nick's like, whatever, what can I do? Sort of nonchalant about it. Part frustration, part nonchalantness. But what that really does with Lee is that he's got to throw three strikes or the game's out. Next three balls that come out of his hand need to be strikes to put any sort of pressure because now he's back down to 24 pins and that will effectively end this match. 4, 6, 7. Mathematically, it won't. What? Yeah, that da, 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 does right. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Lee's hearing it a little bit from the crowd and Lee got to this point and as I said, he's gotten to this point of Matt before and he's a very good bowler. But, uh, not today. And I can't even say he didn't out. He shot a 245 game, too. He was there. He just was not consistent. The lack of consistency got him. So, the best that we can do right now, because that opens to 174. Then, uh, Nick is already at 145. And Nick doesn't need to throw a mark. A couple of nine-pin counts should do it. Especially now. There's a six, and, and now if he doesn't if he doesn't get the Oh yeah, that would be right. If he doesn't get the spare now, the game is mathematically over at this point. Theoretically. I mean Nick now can just basically take the alligator roll and roll the ball down at this point if he doesn't make the spare. If he does, Nick does have to sort of show up. Well he makes the spare that way. He can't do it when it's three six ten. He can do it when the three when the nine's there. No offense to Lee, he's a good bowler, Dillick Dil Gaff is a good squad. And there's a very good chance he will come back and go after the title again. But today was not his day. After game two, everything got, went downhill for him. Christy here, and nine pin, but that will be more than good enough. At this point, best he can do is win six four. And... Nick already has that. Even though it says 144. It's already in the 170s. He'll make the spare. We'll just finish it out for shiggles. But this one is over. Nick Christie's going to win this 4 to 2. So Lee Robeson here's his day. First game 192. Second game got on the board 245. Tied it up. 
then 207, 157, 201, but that win you could attribute just as much as to Nick Christie losing than you can to Nick having it, and then the finishing somewhere in the in the 150, 160s. Still, you knew Nick Christie is a tough competitor. And I'm going to be looking really forward to that match against Charles Withers. That's going to be fun, and that's going to be one heck of a matchup. Go away here a little bit. We're going to see it in the, the end of this. Nick should finish back in the 200s. And it will? Yes, it will. Two of them. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter what Lee did at this point. The game is over. So... I will say this, I have seen Lee shoot better scores. And, and sometimes that just happens. One thing about all all Nick's all Nick's wins, he started out on fire and his opponent could catch him. At the end of game six. If you do not make the top eight, it's just a reminder you are All right, at the end of game six, Nick Christie 201. Lee Robeson 141. Nick Christie will win this four games to two. And we're going to close this one up. This is Gordon Pepper saying good night. Per TD Directors, $117. This is Nick Christie, the Southeast champion of the UBA. This is an official message to Juice the world champ. You called me out at league and told me that I better, if I win this belt, be able to bowl against you. You asked, I delivered. I will see you next month. You better be ready.